reason to look upon the sun as the most magnificent habitable globe. What's crazy to me is that these old primitive theories are somehow less crazy than the modern ones from people that... flat earthers and stuff? Yeah, it's wild. Like, the conspiracy... You watch the latest Lamino video? Uh, not yet. Actually, I was planning on it, but then didn't last YouTube. This is about the Great Filter, right? It's not about the Great Filter. Oh, it's the Fermi Paradox for this one. Okay. In the spring of 1806, two German astronomers were independently observing Venus when they noticed something odd. Giant titted aliens. The hemisphere facing away from the sun did not perfectly blend with the blackness of space. Instead, it had a faint glow with a grayish-red or ashen-gray appearance. This ashen light resembled a phenomenon known as earth shine. It's when sunlight reflected by the earth faintly illuminates the night side of the moon. It seemed reasonable, therefore, to ascribe the ashen light to a similar cause, namely that sunlight reflected by a Venusian moon was faintly illuminating the night side of Venus. Only one slight problem, Venus doesn't have... Oh, it was an invisible spaceship. This meant the ashen light factor. resembled Earth shine in appearance only because there was nothing in proximity of Venus to reflect any sunlight. Yeah, let me know. In the words amazing. of famed astronomer William Herschel, those regions that are turned from the sun cannot possibly shine by a borrowed light. A few decades yeah, later, I'll check it out, another then, German astronomer, Franz von Kreuthausen, proposed a rather creative solution to this mystery. Blow the ashen the light Venus. was the result of sweeping wildfires on the surface of Venus, deliberately ignited by its inhabitants. Oh. He believed that Venus was inhabited by a humanoid species who would periodically light fires on the surface. What an the interesting theory. Which was either to clear land to commemorate a religious occasion yeah. or to celebrate the coronation of Apparently we've been getting dumber because of what, but look at where we came from. <laughs> Fucking did idiots. perhaps get a bit carried away, but he was far from the first to suggest that Venus was inhabited. Titans of astronomy like Christian Huygens and William Herschel envisioned all the planets, including Venus, to be teeming with life. And it took a Here's long time the for this romanticized combo. image to fade. In 1916, this illustration appeared in American newspapers with a caption, A remarkable drawing by Mr. Windsor well, McKay, illustrating the conditions of Venus as astronomical science <laughs> now believe. <laughs> yeah. Even well into the space other, age, we like still find so. echoes Planet of this wide exodus. Yeah. perception. <laughs> they realized in 1967, was the Soviet <laughs> spacecraft plunged into the clouds of Venus to attempt a landing on its surface. Well, the probe did not survive the descent, it was, it was really actually designed to float in case of a water landing. History is ripe with stories much like this one, largely forgotten stories that once upon a time promised to end our cosmic solitude, Lowell. Far from the diffuse shadings uh, reported cool by his First peers, right Lowell could discern a distinctive network of branching spokes. It is as if a bright veil of some sort were drawn over the whole disk. These spokes of Venus bore a striking resemblance to markings observed on both Mercury and Mars. The features on Mars were especially distinct and remarkably linear. So someone was graffitiing them. Lowell had been somewhat unimpressed by the spokes on Venus but he became nothing short of obsessed with Linnae on Mars. There are celestial sights more dazzling, spectacles no, that in inspire Texas. more awe, but to the thoughtful observer who is privileged to see them well, there is nothing in the sky so profoundly impressive as these canals of Mars. Owing to their striking linearity, Lowell could reach but one conclusion. The Martian canals must be the workings of an intelligence. He carefully laid out his arguments in three lengthy books filled with these intricate Oh, he was a scam artist. Damn, the Martian canals represented a vast really irrigation yeah, he's the original designed L. Ron to carry Hubbard. melted <laughs> ice water from the poles. Man tried to make early Scientology. Yeah. While many were understandably skeptical, the idea that Mars could be inhabited was an extremely compelling one, perhaps even more so than Venus. 
legendary science fiction author H.G. Wells famously wrote The War of the Worlds, mm -hmm, a fictional story about the Martian invasion of Earth, first published in 1897. But a decade later, Wells published a speculative, non-fiction article titled The Things That Live on Mars. Inspired by Lowell's fanciful interpretations, Wells goes on to envision oh. the habitat, society, and appearance of real Mars. Man, are you fucking dumb? You think the aliens would look like this? Using... What is this? Does that one alien have, like, little flowers in her hair? Yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> She's a cute girl. I love the accessories. They look like sea monkeys. <laughs> like, there's no chance these guys would is ever... Is that their be... magic carpet? Is that how they go around? I don't know. God only knows. <laughs> I'm more interested in all like the weird tech. So they have water wheels, but also like these giant mega structures. So they're they're all over the place, honestly. To Wells and many nerd. others, the existence of Martians was not just possible; it was probable. Indeed, to some, it had already Ooh, attained a of an ear of truth. In 1891, the French things. Academy it had like already an attained a suit. of an ear of truth. <laughs> In 1891, the French Academy of Sciences Dude, was bequeathed a sum of 100,000 francs by a wealthy Parisian know. widow. The money was to be awarded to the first person who found the means of communicating with another planet, with the notable exception of Mars, implying that communicating with Martians would have been far too simple of a challenge. That's awesome. Indeed, maps of the Red Planet published by the US military that very same year featured sprawling networks of canals. Man, we're really blasting through the timeline here. The alien factor. The alien factor? A towering so, Atlas Agena rocket is the launch vehicle that hurtles the Mariner into the heavens. Scientific apparatus on the Mariner will try to measure the density of the planet's atmosphere. And a television camera will seek to make photographs of its surface. Giving man his first close-up look at Mars. In the American spacecraft Mariner 4 transmitted the first close-up photographs of the Martian surface Looks in like the shit. summer of 1965. Boo, Mars Despite is boring. The complete Boo, absence don't of any, any linear markings, scientists at NASA were unwilling to give up hope. Nothing positive concerning the existence or lack of canals can be concluded on the basis of the Mariner 4 photographs. I mean, look at this. Not only is there a clear correlation between this sketch and this photograph of Mars, but you can almost see these barely perceptible lines snaking across the plains. But what does that all mean? The spokes for the alien on Venus, ecosystem? meanwhile, bear a curious resemblance to the inside of an eye. Oh. It appears that Lowell constrained the aperture of his telescope to such an extreme that the blood vessels inside his eye began to cast shadows, I guess if some of like which might have fallen eyes. onto Lowell's retina, creating the illusion of labyrinthine markings on distant worlds. It is as if a bright veil of some sort were drawn over the whole disc. What does this mean for the travel? Good question. <laughs> Whether it was optical illusions, indistinct shadings on the planets, turbulence in the atmosphere, technological limitations, or an untempered willingness to believe these networks of lines were merely figments of the mind. There is something incredibly tragic about these old misconceptions. I mean, wrong. there was a time not so long ago when life beyond meant life right next door. There's still hope of finding less complex forms of life on a select few planets and moons, which spooks. is very exciting, but also a far cry from a tropical Venus or an ecumenopolis on Mars. As our knowledge of the universe continues I think it'd be to so expand, underwhelming if all so we found too was must like a small little bacteria cosmic neighbors. out in space. Can't even talk to it. Wouldn't even speak English. By the mid-20th century, the ashen light had been observed by not dozens, but hundreds of observers, many of whom were as experienced as they were adamant of the phenomenon's existence. Despite this preponderance of eyewitness accounts, Brox. the lack of any empirical evidence attracted a fair amount of skepticism. In early 1643... Holy shit, this... Whoa, God damn it, you just scrolled up. Holy shit, this video is far off. How can people publish <laughs> these lies? What do you... What, it's just... It's literally a history lesson. What, what do you mean? What do you... What do you think happened in history, I guess? <laughs> what... Like, what lies? That's a genuine question. I'm super curious. Because it's not like he's giving any, like, 
takes or anything or misrepresenting it. it is literally the history of how astronomers once viewed venus and the theories that came along with it and he even cites the sources in the video even if, like let's say in like a far off possibility that everything outside of earth is cgi it still wouldn't change that there's nothing being lied about in this video it is still just a history lesson <laughs> of what the astronomers were saying and how they arrived there. The history is cool, but the talk about aliens is far off and we all know this. He was saying what the astronomers <laughs> said. What are you talking exactly about? Exactly what an alien would say. What the, he was just saying like the astronomers believed that it was probable that there were aliens on Venus or Mars due to them seeing the ashen light as well as canals. Keep in mind, these are 200 year old people. These are primitive. <laughs> They're not as smart as you with the C plus and AP biology or whatever. Whatever, but it's just going over like where it came from. Did you mean, okay, maybe I misunderstood. It's 5 a.m. Maybe I miss. Do you mean the video creator, Lamino, or do you mean the old timey people? Because maybe there's a disconnect. I think I thought you're talking about Lamino, but maybe you're talking about primitive man. The astronomers have learned over the years, most of the stuff they learned wasn't correct. I enjoy the history of the video creator. Sorry. Even more. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, old. <laughs> old Old humans are dumb. Agreed. They make me, they don't even have Google, like virgins. Ritually witnessed a band of colors enveloping the disk of Venus. The night side was tinted greenish blue and closed by a semicircle of light. Ritually ascribed the vivid colors to light being refracted inside his telescope, an effect known as chromatic aberration. In other words, Ritually thought the faint glow on Venus was an optical illusion. Okay, so a quick aside, I managed to find an observation that, to my knowledge, has gone completely unnoticed and actually predates the one made by Riccioli. A German priest and scholar named Athanasius Kircher wrote in 1662 had observed a band of colors on Venus. No date was given, but Kircher did provide a location, Palermo, Sicily. Based on historical records, Kircher paid his last and only visit to Palermo in the spring of 1638. So Kircher observed the ashen light five years before Riccioli and should thus be credited with its discovery. Okay, back to the video. Riccioli's doubts Damn. about the ashen he light echo rewrote the history. Centuries. And by the 1900s, seven. it was not uncommon for sightings to be dismissed as a mere trick of the eye, with no hard proof of its existence I and can a beat up lack these of guys in a fight. between those who had seen it. <laughs> no shot. These old, old to join the ranks primitive of myth men were built for combat pugilists. But in 1975, the Soviet spacecraft Vienna 9 became the first to successfully orbit Venus. Diving into the shadow of this faded twin, he detected faint flashes of light emanating from the clouds below. It's just gonna be aliens, I bet. Venus and Mars have historically been the two prime candidates for cosmic neighbors, but the other planets have not gone completely ignored. Scottish astronomer James Ferguson had few reservations about life in the solar system. When it came to Mercury, for instance, Ferguson thought that Mercurians simply possessed greater resilience to heat. It is very likely that the people on Mercury have the same opinion of us as we have of the inhabitants of Jupiter and Saturn, namely that we must be intolerably cold and have very little light at so great a distance. If only you knew, Fergie. Inspired by Ferguson's knew. optimism, William Herschel took it a step further. In 1795, Herschel constantly Jacob. announced that the inside of the sun was home to an alien civilization. This Damn, might seem incredibly so bizarre, powerful. But at the time it was like not Superman uncommon to view the sun as an enormous planet encased by a luminous atmosphere. Herschel expanded upon that idea by regarding sunspots as openings in this flaming shell that momentarily exposed the true surface underneath. This concealed surface was richly stored with inhabitants who were shielded against the immense heat by intermediate layers of clouds. We have great reason to look upon the sun as the most magnificent habitable globe. What's crazy to me is that these old primitive theories are somehow less crazy than the modern ones from people like that... Flat yeah, it's wild. Like, the conspiracies that we come up with now blow these old ones out of the water despite the people having no reason to believe, like, any of it was like uh, not plausible. Did you about that aliens lived I <laughs> up in, like, near Aberdeen? No, I don't think he said that. He literally would take pictures from... You know how there's, like, Google Earth? Yeah. Google Moon images. Take a screenshot. 
put it in photo the high girl which basically to hire an all gray and then finds the edge right and then he okay. he would take that do the high pass filter on it like six or seven so it would create like really hard edges and be like see this is a map of the underground like you can't see it unless you use this filter and i wanted to be like oh god but we were so scared we were gonna definitely didn't finish the interview <laughs> because the guy was whacked a whack job but we sat there for like two hours this guy yeah you're right we'll have a tea interest maybe he was right though we haven't really checked for like underground railroad systems on the moon yet <laughs> whereas you and i see a barren landscape devoid of life Hevelius is spied upon the moon a near perfect cool copy of earth mountains and valleys rivers and lakes swamplands and woodlands islands and capes this vivid interpretation no, Photoshop is an far more reliable. that bright and dark patches delineate continents from oceans in fact this fallacy is still reflected in the nomenclature we use today dark plains on the moon all have aquatic names such as the ocean of storms the lake of dreams and the sea of tranquility Tranquility Base here. The eagle has landed. The water never filled these gloomy basins. It's not entirely inaccurate to call them ancient seabeds, for they are the volcanic scars left behind by vast oceans of molten rock, making the Lake of Death. How can you explore other galaxies afternoon. but can't explore the rest of the ocean? While Hevelius never observed any yeah, creatures on the, the moon, its subjective ocean. resemblance to the That's Earth sure. convinced him that Lunar was like that idea in Pacific Rim that a the conviction deep ocean still being upheld more than a aliens. century later by who else if not William Herschel. I mean, just... Herschel nearly convinced himself that the cratered landscape of the moon had been engineered by its inhabitants. Craters or circuses were not the remnants of violent impact events but skillfully constructed towns and cities. While Herschel obsessed over circular dwellings, astronomers like Franz von Grothausen despite wow, wow, habitats of all shapes and sizes. <laughs> no, he said it. It sounded awesome. Franz von Grothausen. And because of its star shape, <laughs> perhaps awesome. it is dedicated in service to the stars. The circle in the south, the two highest mountains in the north, and the two hills in the southwest are natural objects. But it is highly probable that these embankments serve as the dwellings of sentient beauty. beings on the moon. In reality, Gratas and mistook some oddly shaped terrain for intelligent design. Oh. The increasingly speculative nature of these extraordinary claims culminated in anyone. a truly incredible sighting by John Herschel, the son of William Herschel. Whilst gazing upon a rock formation on the moon, we were thrilled with astonishment to perceive four successive flocks of large winged creatures. They were like human beings. Their wings possessed great expansion and were similar in structure to those of the bats. So he just the moon was fucking evidently home he just lying. species of now he just lying. and flying <laughs> man bats. This was a truly profound, if not bemusing, discovery, not just for the world, but also for John Herschel. Because upon being inquired Jesus about this Christ. remarkable find, like John responded survived. with confusion. He had no knowledge Jesus of any Christ. man bats on the moon. It turns out the story had been fabricated by an American journalist named Richard Locke. Locke had sought to lampoon the often frivolous debate about life in other worlds, perpetuated by the likes of William Herschel and Franz von Grothausen. Instead, the great moon hoax of 1835 convinced thousands around the world that the moon was inhabited by bat-like humanoids, unicorned bison, bipedal beavers, as well as, well, storks and yeah. goats. There's also this image of a man-bat besat the flat upon the back of a fellow man-bat televacked by a pack of man-bats. As to why this guy cool. is copying a whiff, history has declined to answer. Yeah, it's a pretty cool fucking picture though. I wish those aliens were on the moon. Bro, if those aliens were on the moon, there'd be As time no doubt and people would be just improved, like killing them It became increasingly difficult to argue in favor because they don't of the moon's like the way they look. With no apparent atmosphere, and this dry and barren wasteland seemed an improbable abode for life as we know it. But by the mid-19th century, the life debate had been resurrected by a new hypothesis about the shape of the moon. The argument was that gravitational forces had stretched the moon into the shape of an egg. This uneven distribution of mass meant that any atmosphere or fluids would have coalesced on whichever side was closer to the center of gravity. 
If that happened to be the far side of the moon, an argument could be made for its habitability. As one author put it, Though the near hemisphere is a lifeless desert, having neither water nor air to sustain life, the hidden hemisphere may have a teeming population. Among the proponents of this and radical was hypothesis right. was none other than John Herschel. An egg shape would fully account for the total absence both of air and of water on the side of the moon turned towards us, and would be quite compatible with the abundant existence you of both and of a immunity from shit by licking ass. Yeah. Had history played out differently? Perhaps we'd be dealing with egg correct. mooners the instead of flat earthers you lick, at this the point. Less no, but that's hurt you are by shit, While skeptics made quick work of the egg-shaped moon hypothesis, far-side inhabitants could not Genius. be so easily dismissed. <laughs> After all, the far side of the moon is unseeable from Earth, and thus ripe <laughs> for <laughs> speculation. <laughs> well, then I subjected them to a spectrographic analysis. <laughs> it's dust. A great amount of radioactive dust. Mary, what you're saying is that somehow, for some reason, the moon has been encircled by a ring of highly radioactive dust? Something's going on on the other side of the moon, the invisible side. This is Something that we ought to know about. By placing aliens on the far side of the moon, early science fiction authors were able to skirt the line of possibility. Oh, you're talking about moonfall. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And perhaps observe humanity from a distance, this cosmic blind spot was the perfect Joe. hiding place. At least, that was the opinion of famed American astronomer Carl Sagan. Hey. It is not out of the question that artifacts or even some kind of base is maintained within the solar system. Did he really say that? Base. It doesn't Humanity seem like anything Humanity got its first glimpse believe. of the far side of the moon in late 1959, moon when the Soviet spacecraft Luna 3 relayed these images back to mission control. Subsequent moon missions is just improved hiding upon her quality, pussy on the other side. but alas, <laughs> reveal nothing but more moon. But this idea of concealment lingers to this day. Many are still holding out hope that somewhere in the solar system, the ruins or technology of some unknown intelligence lie waiting to be found. God, I hope that's accurate. In 1988, the Soviet Union launched a probe known as Phobos II. As the name implies, part of its mission was to investigate the Martian moon Phobos. The probe arrived at Phobos without any major complications, and in late March of 1989 began preparations to plant two instruments onto its surface. But then, contact with Phobos II oh, fuck. was lost. In the weeks and months that followed, rumors began to circulate. Puzzling features and shadows were said to be visible on some of the final images transmitted by Phobos II the nature and origin of which supposedly defied explanation. Through various articles, conferences, and television programs, these images were gradually unveiled to the public. They appear to depict an unidentified craft in orbit around Mars. It was said to be an it alien like spaceship that stain. had attacked and disabled Phobos II. Not only that, but it cast an enormous elliptical shadow upon the surface of Mars. Hmm. Ракету, взлетающую из поверхности Марса, и после которой еще остается инверсионный след. Как вы к этому относитесь? Ну, если дать волю фантазии, то, конечно, можно найти и такие объяснения. Но мы склонны видеть совершенно реальные, хотя, может быть, еще до конца не объясненные обстоятельства, которые породили вот такой вот след. Скорее всего, это все-таки тень от какого-то объекта, Raw data from the Phobos II mission became readily accessible. The unidentified craft looked an awful lot like an overexposed transmission artifact. Oh. In fact, all the infrared images featured the same white streak. Yeah. God damn it. Meanwhile, the elliptical shadow belonged to Phobos. Its elongated shape was due to multiple scans or photographs being taken in sequence before assembling the final image. 
Stories like the Phobos incident have become rather par for the course. Some initial event or discovery leaves an information vacuum which is immediately filled by fantastical speculation. Yeah, a the printing speculation artifact is becomes a tower on the moon. The happenstance of light and shadow right begets there. a human face on it's Mars. Cool. And these prominent boulders on both panda. Mars and Phobos conjure images of a certain Stanley Kubrick film. Whether you're yeah, what if an amateur just really or professional, short aliens? have no experience or decades eat. worth, you're never quite immune to this kind of self-deception. When you, you want something to be true, it can be deceptively easy like to convince yourself that it is. Yeah. Remember that prize money, the yeah. 100,000 francs <laughs> offered to anyone who discovered a means yeah. of communicating with another planet, <laughs> excluding Mars. Well, in 1937, there was a claim on that prize. The claimant was none other than world-renowned inventor Nikola Tesla. In 1899, Tesla had been experimenting with wireless radio communication. During some of those experiments, he picked up some rather odd transmissions. Although I could not decide the meaning, Sleep the well. feeling is constantly growing in me that I have been the first to hear the greeting of one planet to another. A purpose was behind these electrical signals. Tesla described the signals as a repeating sequence of either three or four pulses. Decades later, Tesla was still convinced that he'd received an interplanetary message and had even deduced its origin. The signals consisted in a regular repetition of numbers, and subsequent study convinced me that they must have emanated from Mars. I believe the Martians used numbers for communication because numbers are universal. Then, in 1937, Tesla announced his plans to unveil a new could technology capable of not just interplanetary, but interstellar communication. With such impressive technology at hand, Tesla felt confident that he'd soon be awarded the 100,000 francs. I intend to claim the Pierre Gussman prize. I am just as sure the prize will be awarded to me as if I already had it in my pocket. They have got to do it. They didn't do it. The prize was instead awarded to the crew of Apollo 11 in 1969. As for the alleged message from Mars, well, we don't really know. While Earth was much quieter back in 1899, it was still far from radio silent. What a cool noise! <laughs> Shit. Oh, it sucks. It just sounds like wind. Jupiter's cringe, get off the air. Hate this radio station. Just sounds like footsteps. Boo! Footsteps? They're coming closer to us. Yeah, boo, Who knows? fuck them. Perhaps it was nothing but the rumbling noise of a distant thunderstorm. Upon sailing into the shadow of Venus in 1975, Vignera 9 detected faint flashes of light. The emissions were broadly consistent with lightning, but it's a matter of interpretation. Data gathered by subsequent missions are likewise consistent with Venusian thunderstorms, yet fall short of any conclusive evidence. Presuming that lightning does occur on Venus, could it explain the ashen light? I don't think it well, could. It's been the only explanation the for the ashen light is that it's a highly advanced uh, civilization of aliens. Per second to yield a glow Perhaps that's visible Mass from Earth. That's travel. more than 20 times the mean rate on Earth and would likely have been observed a long time Hugen ago. In the blunt initially. words of another paper, lightning is not acceptable as an explanation number. for the ashen light. But in certain parts of the world, there is another striking phenomenon illuminating the night sky. Aurora Borealis. These vibrant curtains of light are the result of charged particles ejected by the sun mm, colliding cool. with the Earth's magnetic field. Could something akin to the northern lights be responsible for the ashen light? Aurorae yeah. have indeed been observed on it's planets like Jupiter dogs, and Saturn, so, okay, so it might seem like yep. an obvious solution. What makes it not so obvious is that the magnetic field around Venus is virtually non-existent. It is extremely weak and transient, and is generated by a completely different process than here on Earth. In spite of this, when caught in the path coffee? of a solar storm, Venus has, in recent years, 
been observed to glow. That's really awesome. The underlying mechanism of this glow is still poorly understood, but there is an apparent link between solar activity and diffused emissions of light on the night side of Venus. According to author John Barentine, who's written the definitive book on the subject, the data are inconclusive, but there are hints in this figure that something is indeed up. The apparent spike in the number of ashen light sightings in the 1950s correlates with one of the strongest solar maxima of the past 250 okay, years. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. As Wi-Fi signals quite increase, quite so too does it's a bit the, too the early to celebrate. Nothing conclusive has I think been found, what he's and saying. despite many attempts to do so, the ashen light has never been recorded on camera. Until that happens, this nearly 400-year-old mystery remains in limbo. Should it be ascribed to the atmosphere of Venus or the mind of the observer? Perhaps we should have listened to Giovanni Riccioli from the very beginning. Perhaps it is nothing more than a convincing illusion. Yeah, I think it's an illusion. I don't believe in anything. Ever. <laughs> At all. The search nothing. for cosmic neighbors continues. <laughs> Many scientists now believe that both Venus and Mars used to resemble Earth in the distant past. Perhaps a relict biosphere or the remnants of a once teeming population can still be found in Venusian clouds or Martian soil. There's mounting evidence that the Jovian moons Europa, Ganymede and Callisto, along with Enceladus and Titan of Saturn, Man, all host a vast subglacial ocean. Could resilient microbes or even larger organisms have found a way to thrive beneath the frozen crusts. Even if Earth should prove the sole harbor of life within the solar system. That's something I've looked at. Apparently cryogenic sleep would never work because even when you're frozen, like you n never unfreeze successfully. Like all the neurons and shit in your brain would be, they'd be like brittle and break or something. Yeah. I don't remember exactly what, but they could freeze you. You would just, just yeah, you'd never come back. Yeah. At least with like current technology. Yeah. System, every dot in the night sky has the potential to host another. Let's go, Always yeah. remember, but if at first you don't understand, it's definitely aliens. God, nothing but bangers from Lamino. Yeah, he always does really well done videos. He spends months on them. <laughs> yeah, no, he spends a lot of time on them. You need special proteins like frogs have that don't allow ice crystals to form quickly. Those are the ones that you up. Yeah, they like burst all your cells or something, right? Maybe. All I know is we're not there yet. Maybe we could find a different way of preserving, like formaldehyde. Just like dumping people in formaldehyde <laughs> chambers. And they wake up all gooey and yucky but alive. Can we pickle humans? Exactly. See, someone gets it. I bet with enough dedication and resources, we could find a way to like actually pickle humans. Cryogenic sleep is uh, currently unattainable. Yeah, what would be the other? So pickling maybe? Yeah, pickling probably. But pickling means like adult women. No, like you could just, could you, get you could that? epoxy. You could even use a pot. Like the, there's a hot dog that's been alive for like two years now, yeah. trapped in epoxy. I'm sure it'd work the same for a human. But well, yeah, but that's why we'll, with the epoxy, we'll mix in with like ice cubes or something. Oh, okay. So it's not like extreme enough to form. Emo nerd smashes his room playing Step Mania. What a title. Sounds like one of those old fake videos. It absolutely is. 12 years ago, this shit is definitely going to be fake. Is there some Logan and Aurora? Look up Dude Stop Me, Let Me Go. I'll check it out in a sec. Actually, research this story. It's real. I found the rage. What to do in this monitor? God, like. Well, I can't get a comfortable spot for my right hand. It was just, at all. Like, it was like he was a bully was throwing like, the new recruit up against the lockers like in the, the locker room. The wall behind my computer wasn't broke till I got this monitor. Now it's completely to shit. Yeah, the monitor really ruined that wall. Oh, speakers in the way. Out of here. 
Okay, you have to get that, sh get that shit out. The speakers are just being real assholes. There's still a speaker on the desk. Get that shit out. Oh, nice. That should help. There we go. We have plenty of space to run it, I'd say. Looks like I'm retired. Well, I, I mean, not forever. You can get another monitor. But it might be best if you did completely what? retire. Did for your own mental health and, like, the safety He's of like, all uh, drywall. Video. Now I'm permanently playing Setmania. You know, got my life bar, score, mid fire. Key setup or some shit. I don't even know what that is. Is your enjoying it? Or... Now I need a new monitor. Like I probably shouldn't even play again because shit like this will just happen again. Like look that, that, that. Like, Jesus. The room. Oh, I should probably quit this game. Look, I put my it's, head through my wall. It's like a warthog came in here and just went wild. Holy shit. And this is real? Well, I guess I mean the whole. Uh, thing. That. There's definitely a level of self-awareness there. I don't know how he did this one, though. This one's on the ceiling. He must have, like, thrown his monitor up like LeBron James with the chalk before a big game. Yeah, I'm like, look, that, Matt. Oh, I don't want to see the other one here. That, Matt, Matt, Matt. Oof. Like, the rest of my room. Oh, I... How do you even make these tiny holes, the little glory holes? What was he doing, like, poking his fingers through it? I guess cords, maybe? Oh, I should probably oh, quit this game. Look, right. I put my head through my wall. You said you researched this and it's real. So, give me the backstory. Now I'm very curious. Scrolled through a shit ton of old Step Mania forums to read about this. He made this video to show how much the game stresses him out and thankfully he quit for his own well-being. He did eventually come back on Twitch a few years ago though, but yeah, this was real. Yeah, the, yeah, posted to dig and break college humor and spike. What a time capsule. Boy, I, I will then ring rage. Sure. Ah! Ah! Well, that's not rage at all. Okay, what the f was that intro? You gotta think about it lots. Of <laughs> Bro, what a crazy intro. Is that all they do is compile like rage moments? Yeah. Thoughts on Better Call Saul so far? Oh, it's been great. I've been really enjoying Better Call Saul. It lives up to the hype. It's not better than Breaking Bad though, I'll tell you right now. Let's watch the new Life of Luxury. Right for us to get involved with this girl stalker. Who are you? Oh no. She looked messed up. I think she came from the woods. Why do you keep bringing up the woods? Because I think there's something dangerous out there. Watch out! Oh God! Oh, God. Dude, just drop it. We're trying to focus on what's going on inside of this house. <gasps> Wait, so this like shadow hands are like, actually the hero. Yeah, this one's got a lot of effort putting into it. They've got like practical effects out the wazoo. Hello, Lux. We received an email from a girl named Olivia who thinks she has a stalker <laughs> staying outside of her They become house. very self-aware. She feels unsafe very, because very she interesting. lives alone because all of her roommates recently went missing. She also says that often when she looks outside at night, she sees a creepy looking old lady in the woods. Oh god. She doesn't even look old. That didn't even sound like bones cracking. Sounded like a fish. So tonight we're going to drive to Olivia's house and is try this to real? find out it is actually stalking her. I read about it in the paper. But first, yo everyone, look at that nerd. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be like a, a merch board?
He's a prime RXC in the Risa Black Dick. Hey kid, if you want to stop dressing like a nerd, just order some luxury merch. Nice. Luxury merch? It's the new official Life of Luxury and Luxury Dark merch. It has premium material and terrifying design. Just go to luxurydark.tv to buy it or click the first link in the description. Well, I'm sold. These are sub 50 shades of moose. God, this is going Go on for a long time. Go to TV to buy luxury merch. Or click the first link in the description. I don't think it's right, but Olivia is all alone right now. And scared. Aww. So I don't see how her being scared is our problem. Dude, just admit that you're attracted to her. Okay, yeah. I mean, from her photo, she's clearly an attractive girl. But I don't understand how her appearance could affect my decision to help her. <laughs> right. Those pictures go kind of hard. That's very aggressive. Yeah, they it seems like they've become very oh, self-aware. Pull over. Pull over. This doesn't uh, seem over. like like they're trying or anything to be convincing. Bro, this area looks sketchy. We're in the middle of the woods. Dude, it's alright. Let's just go inside. Too self-aware? Yeah, too self-aware, I would agree. I'll give it another quick chance though. Oh, wow. Chester, come on. What are you doing? We gotta go. Bro, there's a girl here. Just a coincidence, I'm sure. Dude, come on. Dude, what is she doing there? I feel like they were always self-aware. Maybe, but I feel like the first one we watched from them with the uh, he keeps growing at night or whatever seemed like a okay, legitimate attempt to make like a horror right. short. But now it's obviously very self-aware and just meant to be silly. I'm more just curious if the girl that they have to play this part here is actually the girl in those photos. <clears throat> oh. Um, hi. We're here for Olivia. Is she well, home? Well, that answers that. Yeah, I'm Olivia. I catfished you. Dude, what's going on? Sir, listen. Bro, these storylines are getting wild now. Here for Olivia. Is she here or not? Nah, she's not here. I'm Olivia. I catfished you. Dude, this is weird. Is this some type of trick? No, no, no. Listen, I think I'm being stalked by this weird old lady. I need you guys' help. Just come in. He kind of looks like Joji. Right. Uh, hey, yeah, nice. Well, they're leaning into the self-awareness. That's good. It's always good when someone becomes self-aware. Not Darman, though. True, not Darman. That ruined it. Too self-aware. The amount of views stuff like this gets are wild to me. Yeah, usually if you make content geared towards either family-friendly or kids, it's gonna pop off. Let's see. Where is it? It'd be like, what, two weeks old? Oh, no. Yeah, there it is. I'll have you guys know before this video Royal starts John that I'm 37% Spanish. I spit into a 23 and and Johan. found this out. And my grandpa lives in Madrid <clears> and I'm fluent. Ablamos Espanol. So let's get Fuck into yeah. it. We're talking today about the English versus Spanish speaking streamers. I had a great a time giant in Texas. War brewing, and it all started from Disguised Toast's Rust server. There's a lot of big names, uh, XQC uh, on the English speaking side, and also a lot of big Spanish, uh, Spanish speaking streamers like Alex uh, uh, Bye, uh, that are that are huge, huge people. And it's no secret that Spanish speaking streamers are bigger yeah, than Yeah, this happened like two weeks ago, I think. The guy is only growing. So this was supposed to be a cool event, bringing everyone together. Ended up being a giant shitstorm. Uh, and I didn't think I needed to talk about this because I thought it would dissipate. But the beef is still going today. This is a Spanish-speaking streamer's Twitter account, uh, Recoy, who is mocking oh. Coconut B. He hey, that's the guy we just saw in the Toast video. He was the one that got the first kill. I actually recognized this uh, section here. I didn't realize the name until now. Yeah, this guy went on a huge molding spree on Twitter. Find Coconut B's profile picture with what looks like the crying emoji uh, and made this. And that's his profile picture now. He just made that. It's like three days since the event ended. Uh, but, but let's get into some context. The event was Riley. a 48 hour Rust server um, that, that cost like hundreds of thousands of dollars to produce, not just including prize pool, but just, just having enough Twitch staff to, to run it all together. 
Uh, it's a really big um, project. It, also, why I couldn't be a part of it because it was a Twitch project. So a anyway, that was the idea. And it was 48 hours total. The first 47 hours, you kill people, you get points for killing people, uh, and then at the last hour, you can raid bases and do mass chaos. Amazing content. Whoever has the most points at the end gets money. And that's it. That's the idea. Pretty simple. Uh, but it went to... And a pretty cool really idea, too. Fast. Now, it's going to get a little nerdy here, but bear with me. It started out with a simple rule. You can't Thanks raid prime, each other's bases until the final hour. Knowing that the big bad wolf was not allowed to huff, puff, and blow it down so the little piggies could run any material they wanted. They didn't have to get custom with any bricks today. Thanks, so that's what they did. And, and, uh, and inevitably, at some point, a bullet uh, hit the thing, and, and, and they got kind of upset about that. And so, you know, they were like, okay, now we can't shoot them. And it was kind of a, you know, a, a cheesy but also smart tactic. But the American streamers got around it because they basically used ladders to get into the base without breaking anything. And, and stole some loot. Now, this this was done without breaking or maybe raiding. But the Spanish streamers were like, oh, okay, that's that's cringe. That shouldn't be allowed. So the admins got involved. They set new rules. Okay, now you can't enter the square. Stop, don't touch me there. You, everyone has a 15 by 15 no-no square. And you can't invade it at all. That was the rules. Everyone was happy with it. And then the Spanish streamers immediately broke the rules. Maybe it was a bit of revenge because they didn't get like all of their loot back from the Americans coming in. They're like, this all is right. still dumb. And so it was this like, feels like normal point. rust. Uh, but they broke the rules that were just made. And so then the admins are like, okay, look, no, you, you have to return this stuff and, and we'll reset again. Uh, the whole story kind of feels and like roomy. like um, uh, one of those adults, adults at a playground and they have to be like the arbiter for the kids. And you'd be like, oh, Timmy, please return the doll that you stole and say sorry. But it kept happening. Like, the, Timmy kept stealing the goddamn doll and shit kept happening. So the, the admins were getting involved a lot early on. And there was, there was mostly drama from the event. Uh, and, and That's all I know from uh, it. Arguments on, on people being allowed to use certain pistols and, and basically trying to define the rules and not actually just play the game and have great content and interactions with people that you rarely ever Brian get to interact Jorman. with. Like the leader, like they're not, dude. This is a dude. This is a prediction I have for tomorrow's event. Hmm. Tomorrow, I predict that this tournament will. I predict that this tournament's gonna end. Oh, regular win. old Nostradamus. I feel like we're gonna be ahead on points, and they'll leave, not even see this entire thing through. I. I... Well turns out morning of the final day of the event the captain of the spanish team alex who has 6.4 million twitter followers giant streamer tweeted a, uh, a, a twitter thread that uh translates basically to hey thanks for nice, the Coco. invite there's a lot of bullshit going on Use like coconut b i'm not very good at rust so i have to look to my players they weren't supposed to be using a certain pistol early on which turns out that everyone was allowed to use pistols at any point. The primitive rule wasn't actually a rule, but everyone was abiding by it anyway. But a minor note. And then the, 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 they stole a helicopter and didn't return it, which, you know, fair. That sounds annoying. That sounds frustrating. Yeah, Tiana's and, watching And a Marvel. bunch of bullshit happened. So here's the thing. They're not respecting us because this is all an American event and the Americans make the rules. It's on American servers. So we, the Spanish, aren't going to play and they quit. They quit right there. Now, this wasn't unprecedented. The prediction kind of was obvious because they had gone on strike. They were <laughs> almost trying to leverage that they were half the event. So if they weren't playing in the event and they didn't get the rules That's they wanted, so cute. then the event wouldn't proceed. You it's just have you. to agree to do it. And if people break it, you're like, this sucks. Yeah, it's kind of similar to all Ark. The power that you would like. All survival um, games are somewhat the final, similar. They uh, share the same part DNA. Part of this is uh, these tweets are in Spanish because I am Spanish. And, and, um, thanks again for toast. No drama with him. Okay. You know, finale. It was supposed to be a cool raid. It was supposed to be nice. Um, and look, if that was everything that happened. It'd be pretty boring. That's okay. Like, like I would say, hey, play it out just because it's better content. And I think content is key. Thanks, you said I would rather lose and, and, and be the punching bag for someone else to win and have better overall content than no content at all. But I understand a bit. I of am an American and I love and oil. Being a captain Yeehaw. and not being good enough <laughs> that, that you want to continue through the rules. I, All I right. But there were Spanish streamers, including Alex, who were also okay. super 
inappropriate. It was the very American. Um, there were a lot of viewers that are inappropriate, but but when the captains, when the when the streamers are saying up shit, then it's harder to defend. Uh, and this is Recoy, who is the same guy who's making fun of Coconut B. Yeah, this guy was really fuming. Picture, uh, just just typing a slur into chat. And then, and Alex, the, the captain of the Spanish stream, the big Spanish streamer, being like, oh, what's the R word? And then they type in the N word. Um, not actually typing it out fully, but like they're joking that, hey, this isn't a slur. Oh, you, you're you talking about the R word? You mean this. And then typing the letter N imp implying the N word. Which, you, like, it's not done from a place of like, hey, this is a fun little bit. Let's do that. The, even if... They would uh, like, snow even Sierra, if they're, they're trying to come up with a shitty joke and you're trying to get the benefit of the doubt and it's a shitty joke, it's from a place of animosity when they were beefing with English streamers. Uh, which I think that added context makes this a little more uncomfortable. We thank all the creators <clears throat> for their time and viewers watching, um, and then they <clears throat> want to make good events. We understand we're listening to community. What's the drama we about? The we wanted we Spanish streamers doing, thinking uh, the right Americans Spain, are cheating. Latam in NA communities in future events, uh, and that's and that's it. Or oh, that it was rigged uh, against and, them. And a lot of NA streamers were, started it, were I think. pretty were pretty sad. Um, here's a clip. Uh, Wendy Natsumi, one of the streamers uh, on America's side, stayed up for like 48 hours. Uh, I'll let Hannah take that's it away. Because like, even though like no one, no one. Forced Wendy to be on for 48 hours. That's incredible. Like Wendy is a godsend. Like, no, no one. Oh, rip Wendy. Wait, is that her? Oh, no. <laughs> no one. No one. Made... Reminds me of no Pixel one... Place. <laughs> You're talking about our okay, place. Yeah. <laughs> they really caught up about this. You know, the whole internet was trending uh, up in arms for the English speakers. Uh, but I think Mendo, Mendo, one of the um, one of the English speaking streamers who played the longest, right? In, in, no, uh, I never watched the actual conclusion the of all the drama. In. And, uh, and this is what he had to say. I thought it was pretty poignant. Uh, stand by those words, 100%. It is Damn. mindless. It is childish. And I cannot believe that actually happened with a set of streamers that are grown adults when they call those 14 year olds. Said racist chat hoppers that up everyone in my team, my teammates, the people that have never played before, saying racist shit like eat your dogs, go back to the kitchen to the women that are playing. Yeah, You're tell your truth, man. Yeah. Get banned. I know the streamers are not doing actively anything to stop this. And God damn, throwing it hoppers. down. Spineless shit too. I cannot believe that grown adults act like them. Words I could not agree more with. I had the same exact problems when I was doing Rust tits. with XQC because he would say something like Ludwig's being a rat and then I'd have a and million handsome. people in my chat when I was a smaller streamer than I am today. And it was annoying and I would get mad at X, say the same things. And it sucks when, um, you know, any streamer's doing it. And, and it seemed like the main people doing it in this event were the Spanish streamers. Uh, and, uh, and it's kind of a bummer. It's kind of a bummer that it was a bad first integration from all the communities, because I think a lot of this wasn't really the first. To be fair, our place did it first, right? Wasn't the Twitch drama? I think it happened. The, the Rust event happened a week after our place. What well, I think wasn't it? Yeah. So our place, we had already clashed. We had already kind of uh, butted heads a bit. Got a little wacky in the Thunderdome, and that was good, I guess. Are are dope. Uh, most of them are. You know, almost all of them are, and and make super True, awesome. True. Our place was more than and, just Twitch. Um, and there's nobody, I've always said this, that I look up to more than Ebai right now. Maybe Jerma. I mean, Jerma's cracked. But the, that, that's that's doing it the way I think you should be doing streams. Um, and so it's a bummer that e this stream like, slap. molding, True. melding of communities was such a flop. It's tough, uh, but at the end of the day, it just felt like there was so much animosity. And it came from a lot of the leadership on the Spanish side team. Not everybody. Some people had great interactions. Uh, in yeah, true. Support, Alex B's uh, like Spanish, 11 tweet uh, long rant was pretty but the leadership embarrassing. On the Spanish streamer side, I feel like kind of <clears throat> this event to some extent. Um, and maybe there could have been more fewest. effort done beforehand to ensure that that it was more fair and that they were okay with the rules before signing up. Uh, I can't imagine streamers do that much due diligence before signing up for events. Um, but maybe that's what we should be doing so this doesn't happen again in the future. Anyway, sad for streamers. That's the drama of the week. And I'll let Toast finish it off because I think he really encapsulated it the best. I thought there was more to it, but it looks like I pretty much understood all of it beforehand. Hi, Toast. I, I, I authorized Shifter on all the... Nice. Yeah, I thought there was so many more layers to it, but yeah, I guess they just really lost their minds over almost nothing. That's a shame. I thought that was going to be like a crazy story.